How's it going, folks? Welcome to Found Flicks. On this inning, explain we'll be looking at the sequel to The Woman in Black, The Woman in Black 2: Angel of Death. Jeez, Angel of Death, that's a bit much. We follow a school teacher who evacuates World War II London with her students, taking refuge at the cursed Eelmarsh house, and soon discovers they're not alone. Because, you know, the woman in black is still there. While the first Woman in Black was an effective and thrilling ghost story, the sequel is a huge letdown. It doesn't have much in the way of plot, just kind of people watching wandering around for 90 minutes with no drive to the story, and underdeveloped characters. They make it feel like a slog even at a brisk 90 minutes. But probably the biggest flaw is just how damn dark the whole thing is. I get that in horror movies it of course makes sense to keep things dark, but this is to a degree that I don't think I've seen in any other horror movie. Like you literally can't even see what's happening at several points. And this caused me to actually miss seeing the woman in black on screen. And I'm like staring all around the screen. Where is she? Is she even there? Oh, there she is, gotcha. And this has a hugely adverse effect on the scares since you can't even see her. You don't even know if you're supposed to be scared or not. I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but it's honestly really annoying. And of course, not having Daniel Radcliffe back, even as a cameo, is disappointing as well. So now that we all know that we're in for a huge disappointment, let's look at the return of the vengeful spirit in The Woman in Black 2, Angel of Death. Breaking down the story, what new things we learn about about Jeanette's tragic backstory and explaining the ending that leaves things inconclusive so they could probably try to do another sequel but it never happened. 40 years after our first story involving Arthur becoming entangled with the spirit of Jeanette Humphrey aka the woman in black we follow young teacher Eve who is caught in the literal crossfire of World War II having to take refuge daily from the constant attacks that have destroyed much of London. In order to keep her students safe and as their parents find themselves unable to leave the city Eve along with headmistress Mrs. Hogg are evacuating all of their kids out of the city and to the safety of the countryside. They're joined by one other child, Edward, whose parents were recently killed, and ever since he hasn't said a word. Certainly, getting out of the city is a wise idea, yet of course they're heading to the village of Crith and Gifford, which is home to the woman in black. During the train ride, she happens to meet a pilot, Harry, who is also on his way to the town where he mans a nearby airbase. Not sure why the heck they would need one of those in the middle of the English countryside, but okay. Having to drive in total darkness to avoid detection by bombers, their bus gets a flat tire, and a woman sobbing lures Eve to a rundown building. Seeing a crazed man inside, mumbling something about died on Sunday, seen on Monday, who will die next? It must be you! Oh, good for the woman in black, she's got her own little rhyme now. Now you really made it, way to go lady. Seeing that he's blind, he warns to not look at her, getting agitated and shattering a window. The flat fixed, they conclude their journey to the distant Eelmarsh house, learning it's been abandoned for years, passing by Nathaniel's cross still in the marsh. And the house looks pretty much the same as four decades earlier, but now with electricity. Upgrade! While the kids get settled in making their beds, Eve chats with Dr. Rhodes. She asks about another room in the hall, but according to him, it should be locked. It definitely isn't. The door creeping open to the nursery, seeing some of those weird dolls are still around too. Poor Edward longs for his mommy looking at a photo of her, and Eve comes over to comfort him, asking to promise to sleep well and have no bad dreams. But even if so, according to her, nightmares are a way to get rid of bad thoughts. Once you dream them, they're gone. He's not that gullible, handing over a note calling it rubbish. Well, kid, you're smarter than you look. Mrs. Hogg is less sympathetic, annoyed that he still isn't talking and vowing to get him chatting by tomorrow. He grabs Eve's hand in fear, looking like something is watching them from a hole in the ceiling above. The woman in black is probably like, dang, look at all those kids. It's like a buffet down there. And speaking of bad thoughts and nightmares, Eve has some of her own, dreaming of seeing a hole in the wall, peeling it away, revealing a bright light, and appearing in a hospital, hearing a baby crying. An unseen woman screaming as the baby is taken away, demanding to know where they're taking him. Eve passes the curtain, seeing an empty bassinet swaying. A ghoulish hand reaches out, covering her mouth, and she wakes up to low, rhythmic thudding, taking a lantern to investigate. The sound's getting stronger as she goes further down into the dark basement area. Another creak groans, 
and suddenly all the sounds stop. She comes across the same zoetrope used by Arthur and other junk littered around the basement, startled by a sighing sound, but seeing nothing. At least I don't think so. Is there, uh, is there maybe something there? I don't know, let's look. The next day, it appears that Jeanette has set her sights on Edward, confronted by some boys, and he's drawing a picture of him and the woman in black holding hands. The jerk kids take the picture, offering to give it back if he bests them in a game of hide and seek. After counting, he sets off after them, coming to the nursery, seeing what looks like feet under the curtains. Just about to pull them away, the kids show up and close him in the room. The dolls come to life, a dark shadow passing over them and enveloping the boy. Eve shows up, unable to get the door open, but the kids insist that they didn't lock it. She pounds on the door, demanding to open, and it does. Edward oddly sitting on the floor, staring at the wall, and now clutching one of those dolls very closely. Definitely looks like Jeanette's found a new favorite to replace her long lost Nathaniel. And meanwhile, he's also excited that he has a potential new mommy. So what if she's a murderous ghost? Come on, beggars can't be choosers. Harry shows up for a visit, and Eve attempts to describe feeling something off about the house. She's obviously scared, but still puts on a big old smile, causing Henry to ask what's behind it. Her describing it as kind of her coping mechanism to deal with everything. Just smile, that sounds healthy. Trying to get more information, she interrogates Edward about what he saw in the room, writing a note that she told me not to tell, getting more aggressive with him. And he writes another note aimed personally at Eve. You let him go, which chills her to the bone. The other kids keep messing with Edward, even trying to scare him at one point that has literally no effect on the kid, but he still thinks he's in power, putting Edward's drawing back into his pocket. Locking up the house for the night, Eve hears more thudding from the basement, and the lights flutter momentarily, the door creaking open, and hearing a ghostly whisper saying to come in. And Edward rustles awake. He starts breathing heavily, the woman in black standing right there. He pulls the covers over his head, a surefire way to get rid of ghosts, the shadow looming over him and covering him completely. But it's Tom, the jerk-ass kid, that she sends to his death. Hearing ghostly children echoing, he stumbles out of the room, walking outside in a trance, even though the door was locked, found the next morning dead on the beach. Hog tries to keep things under wraps, telling the kids that it was an accident, but commands them to stay together even during playtime. While Eve is already convinced that they aren't safe here, asking Rhodes if anyone else lives here to his confusion, writing off her concerns, telling her to keep her visions to herself, and that she needs to be better prepared for this war. Not sure what that has to do with this, but that's solid advice anyway, I suppose. Thanks, Rhodes. Why are you even in the movie? You literally add nothing at all. She later flashes back to the hospital, then finding herself at the graveyard right by Jeanette's grave, and then stopping at Nathaniel's, his mother watching from afar. Eve attempts to chase after her, which isn't really fair since she she can, you know, teleport and stuff, even standing back in the trees while she's running haplessly in the wrong direction, and stumbles over a small ridge now completely surrounded by fog, hearing screams and inhuman shrieking, similar to what happened with Arthur when he was shown how Nathaniel died. Running back to the woods, she runs into Harry. Worried, she explains there is someone else on the island, and he surprisingly immediately believes her, at least willing to take a look around the house. Where better to start than the crap-filled basement? He finding a key with some letters etched into the top part, while Harry puts on a wax cylinder that explains a bit more about the sisters Alice and Jeanette's relationship, this time from Alice's perspective. Feeling no one will believe her tale, she says it all began with Nathaniel's death, calling him more a son to me than her sister, mentioning that Jeanette saw Nathaniel's tragic accident in the carriage from the window in the nursery, which we have seen her standing in several times. Alice continues that she makes her watch to feel what she felt and see what she saw, her shadow beginning to spread behind Harry, but nothing happened. He relays what he learned to Eve, who thinks that she recognized the key's letters from somewhere in the village. And the two set off in a big time hurry, Harry freaking out about the tide coming in while they go over the little road thing. She's like, uh, it's fine, but it's not for him. Picking up serious speed, and they make it across just fine, abruptly stopping on the other side. And he opens up about what the hell that was all about, recounting that his whole crew got trapped underwater in a plane's fuselage. He tried to swim down, but it was so dark that he couldn't properly properly breathe. And in the end, he was the only survivor, something that weighs heavily on him. And yeah, now he's also a bit frightened of water. Can't really blame him there. The kids are playing while Edward is preoccupied by the hole in the ceiling where the woman in black is watching over them, and she even has given her new son a little present. His drawing that Tom stole sitting on the bed. One of the girls confused because it was in Tom's pocket when he died. What happens next shows us where Edward's allegiances are at the moment. The little girl Joyce looks around the house for him, following along a long red string coming to the end in the nursery, assuming that he's on the other 
end, but he appears behind her and walks away, allowing the door to close her in. She's found by Mrs. Hogg with the strings wrapped around her throat, saving her just in the nick of time. And it seems that if you mess with Edward, his new mama is going to dole out some vengeance. Don't be messing with Edward. Meanwhile, Eve searches through the remains of Crithen Grifford, which has fallen on way hard times in the past 40 years, now pretty much a ghost town. No doubt thanks to the woman in Black's presence there. Though there is at least one inhabitant still there, the crazed hermit guy, Jacob, that she met earlier, who said he and his friends did try to stop her, but now all of his friends are dead. Being on his own has obviously knocked a few screws loose, grabbing at her throat through the grate, telling her it's her fault for bringing her back. But let's her out anyway for some reason. And Eve easily distracts him by throwing something nearby where all the ghost children are just chilling outside. She reads the letter that she found in the house, which must have been from Jerome's office, the local lawyer Arthur worked with prior. The letter is from Jeanette to Nathaniel, containing the truth about who his mother really is, in spite of being raised to think it was Alice. Jeanette did want to tell her son about who his mother really was, and this is when Alice went into action to silence her, getting her sent to the asylum and adopting the son for her own. And it seems the reason why they wanted to keep everything a secret is that it was actually Alice's husband that impregnated her. So yeah, that's pretty awkward. Perhaps even sadder, he died two days later and never even got the letter, and thusly never knew the truth about his mother. Eve is more than ready to get the children out of here now, but Hogg is still skeptical about her increasingly bizarre tales of a ghost woman in the house. Regardless, they can't leave anyway, hearing bombers flying overhead, sending them to the basement for cover. Not probably the best place to hide. But anyway, Eve is upset about the sad fate of Jeanette. And when Harry asks why, we understand the pain that she's been carrying. We were led to believe the hospital scene was related to Jeanette, but it was actually her own past. She had a son, but she was too young to take care of it, and it was taken away from her, seeing it's her in bed yelling for her baby as he's taken away. She tried looking for him, but they were unwilling to divulge any information to her, even his name. And eventually, she had to give up, letting him go, just as the woman in black told her, and see that she actually has quite a lot of common with Jeanette, at least, you know, sad children story-wise. The lights all cut out, and out of lighter fluid, they keep attempting to use matches, briefly illuminating the frightened children. In one flash, the woman's seen behind one of them and puts her into her classic trance, the girl walking off, Eve following after. She places a gas mask on, her body thudding to the ground, already dead by the time Eve catches up. The kids are pretty freaked at this point and decided to take them home, but she suggests using a plane from the airfield. Everyone piles into Harry's army truck, but Edward is a bit reluctant and unwilling to give up his new dolly until Eve rips it from his grubby mitts and drags him along. Clearly, after losing his mother, he has found some solace with Jeanette, even if it is all a little bit weird. So much for an airplane, as they discover at the airfield they are all dummies, and the entire airfield is just a decoy. Eve is confused, as Harry said he was a pilot, but he clarifies he used to be, but since that incident in the water, he couldn't fly anymore and got demoted, officially labeled for having a lack of moral fiber, or in layman's terms, a coward. Hearing this painful information, she puts on her trademark pain smile and plants him a kiss. He promises to keep them safe until they can get a ride in the morning, everyone huddling in the shelter where a girl asks about Tom seeing a ghost. Of course, Hogg writes it off as nonsense, but even Harry is like, yeah, it's true, saying he's tired of the secrets, seeing that Edward has somehow gotten his dolly back to her disbelief. Jeanette's hold on him is certainly strong, and Eve puts her foot down, telling the woman that she can't have him. She responds in kind, igniting all the fire barrels and setting the place ablaze. They join hands in a circle, Eve remembering what the hermit told them, and gets them to close their eyes and say the Lord's Prayer. The lights begin erratically flickering, Hog thinking that they're all nuts, and opens her eyes and gets a taste of the truth in a face-to-face -face encounter with the woman in black, screaming insanely and falling to the ground just at the sight. Yeah, that is one heck of a way to be proven wrong. Sorry, Hog. Edward seizes the moment and runs off into the rain, Harry chasing after. He sees his silhouette in one of the fake planes, a boy inside whimpering and facing away. He tries to calm him down, and he turns, revealing it is a ghostly Tom and not Edward. He climbs out spotting him running down a hill and falls right down the side just as an explosion goes off, looking like he was killed in the blast. When Eve regains consciousness, she doesn't believe he's dead since they didn't find a body, even though Harry did find his little shoe. That's not enough for her, her attention shifting to that drawing of him holding
holding hands with a woman in black, noticing there's a third woman watching from the window. This leading her to thinking that he's alive and is actually waiting for her at the house. She hijacks the army truck, heading back to Eel Marsh on her own. She gets some greetings from the woman, like a disappearing body in bed or a phantom hand on the shoulder, and she's had enough, demanding to see Edward. The nursery door opens, granting her access, the chair rocking on its own as she enters. The wind outside gets louder, the door slamming closed and trapping her in there. She goes to the window, the same one Jeanette saw Nathaniel's accident from, and just as she predicted, sees Edward down below walking right for the marshes, reliving the fate of Jeanette's son. Again, remembering back that letter and that whole idea of seeing what she saw and feeling what she felt when losing her son, making Eve go through that now. Begging to get out, the door stays sealed shut, turning to the floor, which is weak enough for her to break through. She makes it outside as Edward is getting deeper into the marsh, hands reaching out of the ground in an attempt to stop her from intervening, yelling for Edward to fight her, reminding him of fighting bad dreams with good thoughts. It seems to work, Edward stopping in his tracks and dropping the doll into the water. The hands lose their grip on Eve, who swims to Edward, just in time for him to get dragged even further into the depths. She swims down, the woman in black grabbing at him to keep him under the water. A shadow is seen above. Harry here to save the day, diving into the water and getting Eve and Edward out of the spirit's grasp and to the water's surface, but Harry isn't as lucky, getting trapped under the depths. Well, at least Edward is okay, I guess, and he did get over his fear of the water, also proving his bravery here, so he at least died a hero instead of a coward. Good for you, Harry. And finally, Edward speaks, apologizing for Harry's fate, and they hug as the fog lifts, and just as Jeanette was using Edward as kind of a replacement for her son, in a more positive way, Eve goes on to adopt Edward, catching up with the two later back in the big city on his birthday. He's still worried that the woman in black might return, but she confusingly says she won't. She fed on the bad feelings, and Harry's watching over us so she can't come back, asking him to smile, and she follows suit. See, nothing to worry about, just smile insanely and nothing can hurt you. Everything's fine. Of course, she's totally wrong about Jeanette being gone, since they didn't even really try to stop her or anything, they just kind of left. Panning over to a photo of Harry and his flyboys, the picture shatters, seeing the woman in black in the broken reflection. So once again, Jeanette was not defeated. Doesn't even really seem like they even tried to. They just kind of left and went on with their lives. But as we see, it's not so easy. There were preliminary plans for a third The Woman in Black film that would have jumped another 40 years to the 1980s, which I think could have been good, and change up the style to a slightly less musty gothic atmosphere, but Angel of Death did not perform well enough, in addition to being pretty crappy, so it looks like this is the end of the story for Jeanette. Still out there and waiting. As long as you don't take any trips to Crith and Gifford, I think you'll be fine. This brings us to the conclusion of this ending explained for the Woman in Black, Angel of Death. Too bad this one was such a letdown, because I actually did like the first one, and there are some glimmers of hope at points here, but for the most part is just aimless and boring. Oh well, so long woman in black, you did your best, I guess. And don't forget, before we go, you can send me requests for any TV shows or movies you'd like to see me explain by sending them my way on any of my social media accounts at Foundflix. What did you guys think of The Woman in Black, Angel of Death, and its ending? What would you have liked to see in that potential 1980s set third movie? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Foundflix. See you next time. Angel of Death. Sounds like an 80s rock song.